I put my hand up on that one because I brought that into our marriage. And I thought it was a pretty happy, healthy, wholesome attitude that sex was fun. I didn't think it was dirty, you know, and, and it certainly was going to be pleasure, uh, you know, and I was looking forward to that part of it. The problem with that is that it lowered the priority uh, of lovemaking to other things we did for fun, okay? And uh, I was taught you work before you play. Okay, and so then all the serious work had to happen first, you know, like the laundry, uh, picking up the toys, uh, you know, the vacuuming, flossing my teeth, almost anything else was more serious. It never occurred to me, Fran, that making love to Ron was a serious obligation. It was just fun, right? And, and it, it really, um, it not only put him at the bottom of my priority list, but especially once the kids came. I mean, parenting is serious. I knew that, right? But then I could really hurt Ronnie, you know, and I could make all of the love and self-donation he was trying to express to me less important than, you know, a child's whim. If a child came knocking at the door looking for a toy, that was more important, okay? The other thing that happens with this is that if I see sex as fun, I think I have to be feeling in a fun mood, okay? And so then it becomes at the mercy of my moods, right, which I do, don't choose instead of a way I choose to get close to Ron. It also means that it never occurs to me to make love when we're stressed or weary or sad, which is precisely when we probably need to draw close more than any other time, right? Right, at times when we've gone through very stressful situations in our life, you know, the, folk, the tendency is to say, we've got to fix this problem or we've got to address this problem. We've got to get serious about this. And we pull away from each other, which is, you know, our, our real strength is in being close with one another. I have a sick child, therefore we can't make love, but it's really when we need to be together facing this thing. I think the worst consequence of this is that it unwittingly communicates to Ron that I'm only there for him in the good times. And you know what? Life is messy and there's a lot more than good times there. And I want to be for him in all the time. It's not what I want to communicate. And I didn't intend to, but I just breathed that one in. And it just sounded so happy and nice. It also, it also, <laughs> didn't it? Well, it also feeds into, when we think of, of, of sex as just fun, we tend to associate it with the fun times in our life, which tend to be when we're young and carefree and, youth and, and so frivolity, forth. Yeah. Youth and frivolity, yeah. And so we fall into this, this pattern or, or this attitude that we think that as we get older, you know, that, that we move out of that stage of life. We're and grown up now. And the fun things are past, you know, and, and, and our sexual relationship kind of falls in that category along with a lot of other things, and, and so we don't, we don't um, take advantage of or, or use the resource of our sexuality or, or, or um, draw on that strength later in life the way we did when we were younger. That's where you fall into the trap of thinking that being in love is a stage you grow out of. Right. And it's actually a very uh, mature spirituality you grow into because it's other centered, right? And especially, you know, with sexual love, uh, it's really the more fully present I am to Ron in all my personhood. So we grow more intimate like that. So we actually get sexier when we get older. But that's, that's so great counter. News. That <laughs> is great news, by <laughs> yeah. the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're good news for everybody because we're older than dirt, <laughs> but we're still chasing each other around the house. <laughs>